Hello everyone, welcome on the Ifs and Whys channel. My name is Filip Paluch. If you don't know me, I'm .NET developer and architect. I'm also co-founder of Ifs and Whys company and not so posh application. Today we have a great weather in Sicily, so it's perfect time to talk about why you shouldn't use Automapper in your project. Topic dedicated for .NET programmers, but not only. For people who don't know what Automapper is, let me explain. So based on documentation, Automapper is a simple little library built to solve a deceptively complex problem. Getting rid of code that mapped one object to another. This type of code is rather boring to write, so why not invent a tool to do it for us? So in few words, Automapper maps one object to another object based on provided configurations. I'm sure that you will find the same freaky concept in the rest of the languages, so don't be afraid that I based today on the .NET Core example. Now you can think, hey, what's wrong with the idea of automatic mappings? This type of coding is boring, and we need to every time write 10, 20 or 40 or more lines of code. Usually we want to map one object from, for example, database to API response, that's all. Instead of writing so many lines of code, I can use one line where, where I run automapper, I pass the source model and I expect destination, that's all. If you have a small project and you work there alone, Probably you will not notice any problems there, but this is really rare use case to be, to be honest. Usually we work on larger projects where the code has been developed over the years by many teams, many people with different approaches in the meantime. In this case, the code's readability is crucial to maintain and develop that solution easily. Let's think what we do as programmers. For sure, we read code more often that, than we write. Based on, based on many years of experience and many different projects in my life, I believe that experienced programmers optimize the code to be fast to read rather than fast to write. So please think about it. Navigating the code in large solutions where we have a dozen or hundreds of classes is really difficult. In that case, um, tool, programming tools like Visual Studio, Rider, ReSharper are super helpful. The possibility of searching for occurrences in the code is priceless here. So here we come to the first automapper problem. Automapper hides the references in your code. So, so you cannot see that chosen field is used somewhere in the code. So let's imagine a situation that you need to modify one of the existing API methods in your project. In your project, you are supporting dozens of API methods. So let's assume that you need to modify shared model. Unfortunately, people tend to reuse the same models across different API methods. I completely don't agree with that approach, but what to do? So you check your model and you are looking for references in the code. You see only one. Why? Because, for example, Visual Studio hints to you that this field has been used somewhere. So you are checking this place and you are sure that you can easily modify that field without breaking existing logic. Why you cannot see more occurrences? Because in the rest of the logic, in the rest of the API controllers, Automapper has been used. So Automapper hides that references. So you modify your field, you check your implementation, everything is working, but you don't know that you break the rest of the existing API controllers. So if you are lucky, you have a 100% test coverage or testers can catch the mistake. But if not, for sure your client will find that. When I analyze the code, what's the huge part of my work, I want to exactly know what this code is doing directly, without any assumptions. I don't want to waste my time looking for different places somewhere in the solution, and I don't want to waste the time for guesswork. Any magic in the code increases that time. 
So you can multiply that time by number of people working on that project and you will get really huge number. Unfortunately, Automapper assumes keeping configuration away from the place where you are using the mapping, where you are executing the mapping. When your models are not equal, you need to define the configuration for that mapping. What means that you need to tell Automapper how to map one field to another field or how to map nested object to nested object. Additionally, you can implement some additional stuff like null checking, uh, you can throw exception in chosen situation, you can substitute some values based on some conditions, you can add some parsing, uh, type casting, and much more. Everything you need to add to this configuration. Then you are looking at the code and you don't know how the fields were mapped. Does anyone throw exception or not? Has anybody implemented some magic somewhere in the configuration? You don't know. You compare two models and you see that they are different different names, different types, and you don't know completely how they are mapped. You need to waste your time now for searching the configuration place somewhere in the solution. It's not easy to find that. Instead of checking the implementation directly in the function, because this is what you need. You want to read the function. You need to know what this function is doing. That's all. You don't want to waste your time for looking for different places in the solution for some hidden configuration. Using Automapper has one additional problem, increases complexity of the project. Every single developer working in that project needs to know how to configure Automapper, how to properly create configuration for Automapper. For sure, writing normal, simple mapping function is more straightforward and faster. So think about it. Now I need to tell you more. Visual Studio or Rider currently allows um, mappings generation automatically for your classes. So you don't need to waste more time for writing mappings manually. So you don't need to have a mapper because you can automatically generate the mapping function in place where you execute the mappings so you can avoid all described problems. I created the quick demo for you based on .NET Core solution. So let's dive into the example where I will show you based on the real implementation all described previously problems. So let's go. Small interruption now. So please don't forget to subscribe our channel and tell us what you think in the comment. It helps us prepare better content for you, so thanks. Okay, I created a sample solution for you. This is a .NET Core application, API application. So we expose a few controllers, a few API methods. And let's start with a first example where I created two uh, controllers. One where I use Automapper and second one where I use the, where, where I map manually all fields for the, from the model. So let's take a look. This is a contro simple controller where we return the expense from the database. Of course, I mock database connection because this is currently not important, so I create manual in the model. And then I map model from database to model from uh, contract. This is a contract, expense response. This is a contract. So uh, in the contract, like you, you can see, we have a few simple fields and one additional model seller. Let's uh, take a look to the second controller. Second controller uses auto mapper. So I download the same model from the database and I map uh, the model, I map the database model to the response, to the contract. And I don't see what's going on inside, like mentioned, because I have only one line of code. Of course, I created the mapping configuration for that class, but I map one to one, so I didn't um, I didn't add any modification to this configuration. So it's simple map. So let's analyze that. Currently, you need to this is your task, and you need to modify the seller class. Seller class, like I mentioned, is uh, shared across two. API methods 
Unfortunately, like I mentioned, also people tend to reuse models. So let's assume that you want to, you need to rename this this field. So uh, because it is requested by your client, it doesn't matter if it's web application, external client, or different service. It doesn't matter. Uh, we are talking um, about this as a client. So let's check where this place is used. So I can use the rider and I can see that this field has been used in one place. I can see that this is a simple mapping. So I map one field to another field, oh, sorry, to another field. So I can easily rename that field. Of course, here we have a super simplified situation because we have only two controllers. It's quite easy to find um, the mappings and the rest of the occurrences. But in case of uh, larger solutions where you have a dozen or hundreds classes, uh, mappings, uh, controllers, it's super hard to find all occurrences in the in entire solution. So I assume here that there's uh, only one occurrence in, in the code, so I can easily rename that, that field to tags number two, for example, it doesn't matter. So I am doing that. And now what I see is that this mapping, it's working correctly still because um, this, is, this change is transparent for that place. And I'm sure that I didn't modify any different place because I checked that. So I can easily build the solution. So let's, let's try to build it. Let's open the Swagger page. And we can see that uh, we can see our uh, controllers. So let's run the correct one where I have where I have a direct mappings. So everything has been been mapped correctly here. Let's try the the, the second one. So try. And what I see, I see that field is equal to null, this new one. Why? How it's possible? Because I didn't create, I didn't update the configuration of mapper, auto mapper. I didn't add direct mapping where I tell map this field to this field. Previously it was working because field was the same like in database model. Currently I changed the name and field is different so automapper is not able to automatically detect that value to this to this field. So that's the huge problem because you can, like mentioned, detect this um, error only in runtime or if you have a really good test coverage. So that's the first first part. And like you can see here, we have a manual mapping. So there's nothing complicated to to create the mappings manually. I can see everything what's going on here. In case of any refactoring of names, it, it's still it's working. So I can avoid a lot of problems um, in comparison to Automapper. So let's uh, check the second example, a bit more complicated. I created the address controller, the same approach. I'm using Automapper. And here I map address database entity to, uh, to uh, again to the contract. So, but for this model, I created a dedicated configuration because contract model consists of few additional fields like street number, floor, and um, country description, street, postal code, city. But let's take a look to the database model database model, I don't have a floor and street number. So when I check the code, when I'm reading, I want to know what this function is doing. But what I see is I have a two different models, how it's possible, how it's mapped. Can I remove that field completely from, from this model because it, it, it's not used? Or maybe somewhere somebody is doing some magic um, configuration. I don't know. So let's try to find find out that. 
I can see mapping profile, so I can find quickly this profile here because this small solution, but like mentioned, in case of larger projects, it's not so super simple. So here we see that I created the map for address DB entity and address response, where I map my fields. So I see that I added this super strange magic here that I split something. I uh, run two upper function for country to configuration. So when, I, when I'm reading the code, this function, I don't see that. I don't expect that I will run to upper for, for the country. Also, I don't know when I'm reading this function how the street number is calculated. Now I see that somebody stores in database street in form of street, street number and floor, but I don't see it directly in the function. Additionally, um, AutoMapper allows few really freaky things like don't allow null. So in case when I will pass the null in the model or to the database, AutoMapper throws the exception. This is implicit assumption. So it's uh, hard to predict um, from the function perspective how it behaves. Additionally, I can run null sub substitute so I can replace some value. So in case of um, nulls in, in city field, I will return not found. So again, from the controller perspective, I don't expect this behavior completely to summarize. Automapper, in my opinion, doesn't bring anything to your pro project. Automapper increases complexity, reduces code readability, and causes that you are exposed to errors that you can find only in runtime. So that's the, the biggest problem, in my opinion. I will repeat once more. Experienced programmers optimize code to be fast to read rather than fast to write. So please remember about that, think about it, and see you next time.